The more different environments you study something in, the lower the heritability is going to be. Behavior in different environments. Ethology. Behavior in different environments. As natural of environments as possible. Interviewing an animal, but in its own language. History of psychology. William James, a branch of philosophy. Behaviorism, John Watson, quantitative and experimental science, that everything could be controlled in environment to shape behavior in any way you want. Environmentalism, B.F. Skinner all about behaviors, the environment shapes the behavior, and measure it. There were no genes. Reinforcement theory, let me control reward punishment in the environment, and I will produce any behavior you want. Universality of behaviorism, all species are the same, environmentalism plus reward slash punishment plus works on every species. Ethology, variety of behavior. The range of different ways that species could look like. Study it in natural environments. Nico Tinbergen, Conrad Lawrence, H.V. Frisch. Gene environment interactions. How learning occurs. Every species solves its own environmental challenges in a unique way. Ethology is the study of animal behavior, but where you're interviewing the animal in its own language, in its natural environment. E.g. Lab rat. And put it in an enriched environment, and you get a thicker cortex. Then, they studied wild rats. Even if you use the best environmental enrichment laboratory, it's going to be as thick as in a wild rat. So, we need to studying animals in their natural setting. Process of ethology. What was the behavior, fixed action patterns, related to instinct? What in the outside world triggered that behavior, environmental releasing stimulus? What's going on in that organism's head, innate releasing mechanism? What's the value, the adaptive value of that behavior? Fixed action patterns. You might think in instincts, reflexes. But they didn't go that way. Instead, is a tractable piece of behavior involving interconnected muscles and producing a behavior which had a meaning to it. Animals didn't have to learn how to do it, it's hardwired, but animals have to learn how to do it better. And if slash then clause. If this environmental event happens, then realize these behaviors that have superficial resemblance to instinct. E.g. 1. Squirrel raised in a cage. Subsisted on a liquid diet. Give it a nut, and it will know how to crack it. Then. Look at him over time. And he get better at it. A hardwired behavior, shaped by experience. E.g. 2. Visual cliff experiment. Species-specific fixed action patterns. Where animals like sloths don't worry about it, because part of their environment is not drop-down open spaces. And other type of animals get better at it over time. E.g. 3. Monkey raised in complete isolation. You show him a picture of a mad monkey. And he will freak out and give a subordinate gesture, crouching down and not making eye contact. What fixed patterns are? Vervet monkey. Three things that terrified them. Leopard. Snake. Eagle. They have fixed patterns of alarm calls for each of the species. And they know how to do it without prior experience. But. It can be sculpted by experience. Because they don't listen to kids, until some adult agrees with them, because the kids don't know the language very well and makes mistakes. Humans. Infant smiling. Fetus smile at various points. Blind baby smile. Smiling it's a fixed action pattern. Learning, is who to smile at. Anger, fear, disgust. Learning the social context. What's the adaptive value? Gull eggs are speckled. After birth, the mom flips the egg so the white part inside of the egg don't show up. Because it's easier for predators to see eggs that are white. Von Frisch. Be dancing. They found a food source. Fly back to their colony. And they communicate all sorts of types of information. They do a figure eight, a waggle dance. The axis of the figure eight, with respect to the sunlight, which direction to find the source. Longer the dance equals farther the food. More frantically was wiggling equals more exciting food. Then Frisch. He took a beehive. Took a bee and give it amazing food. She goes back to the hive. And it starts doing the waggle. But meanwhile, Frisch goes to the hive and rotates it 180 degrees. So, everybody in the hive comes barreling out and goes to the wrong direction. Because they were given directions as to where to go with respect to the hive's entrance. The animal's own language. What was the sensory trigger, releasing stimuli? Baby gull pecks at his mom beak when they're hungry. Because the mom has a little red circle in his beak. Then, make that little red circle disappear, and the baby is not going to do that anymore. Or, put a gigantic red circle and the baby will start to peck like mad. Super stimulation. Novel experiments. People create robotic animals. Like bees. They send it to a hive to do his waggle dance, 
and the actual bees will follow his instructions. Auditory stimuli that would trigger fixed action patterns. Deer. Trying to find a mate. They give bellowing calls, it could be heard miles away. And if you're the right female, and hear it, you ovulate. Auditory induced ovulation. Rats. Tickle them on their rib cage, and they giggle in ultrasonic range. So, other rats hear it, and go see what's going on. Humans. When females are ovulating, their voices go a little higher. And males subliminally can detect this. Visual realizing stimuli. Turkeys. What makes females attractive to males? They did subtraction substitution technique. They made an artificial female turkey. They changed all the parts of the artificial female. And at the end the male didn't care about the changes. Olfactory releasing stimuli. Humans. You need to two sweat. One sweat from a terrified person. One sweat from a person who exercise. Then, you let people smell the two sources. Objectively people cannot distinguish between them. But, in a brain scanner, give the odor of the terrified person, and their amygdala activates, does not activate if you smell the other sweat. Now, show them scared or happy faces, between different facial expressions. Get somebody after he smelled the scare's sweat, and he interpret faces as more frightened. An odor can change how your brain works and how you judge pictures. Electric fish. Singing to each other in electricity. You get territorial songs. Males who are courting the same female, trying to jam each other's frequencies. Relatedness of frequency patterns between siblings. Vibration. Insects communicate by vibrating. Arachnids, communicate by vibrating a web. Distinctive patterns. Caitlin O'Connell. Elephants. Have pressure transducer receptor in their feet. When they walk, it's causing tiny bits of vibration in the ground that could be picked up hundreds of yards away. They can communicate with vibration through their feet. Tactile. Harry Harlow. Surrogate mother monkey. Baby monkey. Two moms. Minus one that gives milk. Minus one that has terry cloth with a tactical stiff. And the baby will bond to the terry cloth mother. All baby animals have little short muzzles. Big round eyes. Big shiny forehead. Maybe distinctive coloration. Animal cross species will watch them and their eyes are going to dilate, their pupils, and elicit cute responses. Then. Disney artists studied this. Then. Gould. Showed the evolution of Mickey Mouse's muzzle getting smaller. Ratio of the forehead. Mickey lost one of his fingers. Voice prepubescent. So, they learned what is about baby animals that makes everybody want to be around them. In short. Animals in its own language. The effect of experience on the behavior. Adaptive value. Releasing stimulus triggered behavior. Animals are communicating information in sensory realms. What's going on with the brain? when the releasing stimulus happens and pops out the behavior. Neuroethology. E.g. Neurobiology of birdsong. How they create new songs every year. If you isolate one bird, he has the same sort of song, etc. Dash lordosis reflex. A reflex in female hamsters. You put pressure on her rear end, and she will arch his back. Because it exposes the female's genitals, making easier to mount her. Only when she's ovulating, estrogen levels elevated. Humans. Brain scanning. Subliminal sensory information, and what parts of the brain change their levels of activity. Neuroethology with animals in their real habitat. John Wingfield. Physiology and behavior of birds that migrate from Baja to the Arctic each year. The circuitry with migratory birds. Robert Sapolsky. Baboons. What does your personality have to do with the brain chemistry of anxiety? Benzodiazepines. What does learning have to do with this? Ethology is twofold. Boring. Classical, behaviorist. Animal behavior where they have to learn it, and it's not purely instinct. Types of learning, and how learning works. Where learning from trial and error takes places. Female monkey. It's not instinctual, to know what to do with your first baby. Maternal competence. They have to learn how to do it. Their kids have more odds to survive as you go from first offspring to later ones. Also. If you have a big sister who has a baby. When you have your first baby, your baby is more likely to survive. Because you watched her doing it. Anting behavior more likely to your children to survive. Meerkats. They eat scorpions. Mom teach their kids of how to hunt scorpions. They have teaching techniques. Progressively making the task harder, in small increments. One mom hunt a scorpion and teach their kids how to eat it. Two mom captures a scorpion, which remains alive, but mom is able to bite off the stinger, and leaves the kid with the live scorpion, so it can learn how to hunt and kill. 
Three mom captures a live scorpion with the stinger and give it to the kids. Nice, small, incremental steps, don't do the same thing for too long, not too big steps. Animals making tools. Jane Goodall. Chimps. They strip the bark, and insert it into a termite mound, they pull out with termites, and eat them. Use tools to hammer to break nuts. They know how to use a hammer and anvil. Build tools that are weapons. And. The more you watch someone making these things, the faster you're going to master it. Then you start practicing it, and you master it learning by experience. The daughters of the chimps learn faster than the sons. Because the sons don't pay attention when mom is doing it. The larger the social group, the earlier the kids learn the tool use. Only chimps can do it. Baboons watch the chimps doing the thing with the stick eating the termites. When the chimp is gone, the baboons try to do the same. But they just shake it at the termite mound or push it against the side. Something that breaks reinforcement theory. Dash 1 Trial Learning. Conrad Lawrence. Ducks. They imprint on the first thing they see. That how they bond to mom. There's a critical period, less than 30 hours. Dash Prepared Learning. Sauce Bernays Syndrome. Martin Seligman. He went to a restaurant, eat sauce Bernays. And then went to a concert. At home he had a terrible stomach pain. One month later. He went back again to eat sauce Bernays. But when he's eating it. He realizes it smells repulsive to him. So, he can't eat them anymore. Because he's associating it with the stomach pain. An association of A with B. Or A with C. But you're going to make the associating with the closer to A. B's. Give them a source of food associated with a marker. They modify the marker, like the shape, color, or smell. They learn the smell association faster, than the shape or color. Dash all humans are innately scared of spiders and snakes. Isn't innate. But. Humans show prepared learning for being scared of them. It takes less association for us. To associate a spider or snake picture with something unpleasant. Animals slash monkeys. You flash up a complex picture to them. Wait few seconds. Then you flash it up again but with something changed. An animate object, and we're better at spotting things like snakes. Wired up to learn associations more readily. Understanding the internal cognitive and emotional life. Cognitive ethology. Donald Griffin. He discovered echolocation. In WW2 developed the sonar. The possibility of animals has awareness. Book, The Question of Animal Awareness. Animals have strategic awareness. Animals have self-awareness. Gordon Gallup. Captive chimp. Give it a mild anesthetic. And put a little circle on the forehead of the chimp. Then the chimp will find a mirror. And it's likely that he will scratch at his forehead to see what's that thing. Also, elephants. But. Marmoset monkeys don't have self-awareness. Mark Hauser. When they look in the mirror. They need to look something near your reflection eyes. And marmosets don't do that. Because they never look at that part of their reflection. Now, he put the dot on their throat. So now they can see it. Dash theory of mind. At what point in your life you realize of other individuals, boundaries to individuals. Comes around age 4 to 5. Sally and test. To understand that another individual has different information than you. Minus 2 chimps. 1 chimp high rank a clear glass food chimp low rank. If the glass is clear, the low rank won't even bother to go for the food. But, if the glass is opaque, the low rank will go for the food. Because he knows the high rank have different information. Or. Put two low rank chimps, the one who don't have a glass in front of him, he will go for the food, because they're the same rank. But. Chimps don't know how to do theory of mind in a cooperative setting. Only when there's competition. Corvids. You hide nuts in some places. And if there's another one looking at them. They won't hide it, or they'll hide it. And when the other corvid isn't looking, they'll move it to another place. Because they'll know where it is to eat it later. Animals can distinguish between intentional and unintentional behaviors. A captive monkey. You put food. And along comes a human and do two different things. He takes the food and flings it away. Or. Accidentally trips over the plate. The chimp will bang on the walls longer than when the person accidentally did it. Dogs know the difference between who has kicked them and who has tripped over them. Animals plan for the future. Corvids. They have two compartments. One day you put more food on one. The next day you put less food on the other one. And after short time. They will take some from the first one and stash it on the other for the next day. Bees. Give him a food source in the middle of a lake. He flies back to the hive, he dances like mad. But the others don't pay attention to him. They're like really, there's food in the middle of the lake. So, 
rest of the bees won't listen to him. Flexible cognitive strategies. Chimps. Numerosity. They have a sense of numbers having meaning in and of themselves. You teach a chimp a series of three objects. They need to recognize when you show one, he presses a lever, and get a reward. So, they learn the three different trios of pictures. A, B, C. R, E, O. S, T, U. Then, you make a mistake. You change the order of the objects. R, A, O. R, B, O. Now, the chimp will struggle more with the second one. Because they remember better the first A, because it's the first thing they showed to him. Chimps. They recorded the vocalizations of chimps. The sound of big male chimps giving threatening bellows. They hide the speaker in a bush. You play it. But they don't recognize the voice of that individual. So, all go to the bush to check. But now. They add another voice sequentially. And another one. And another one. Until the voices outnumbered the chimps. So, they just run away. Transitive thinking. Russ Fernald. Fish. I'm watching a defeat B. Then B defeats me. I go and give a subordinate gesture to A. All this examples only done in the context of competition slash highly motivated circumstances. In short. Natural setting. Experimentation rather than telling stories. All sorts of species functioning in sensory domains. Types of learning, that organism aren't supposed to learn that way.